All right, everybody, we're gonna walk through um, this currency, FRQ. So the first two, um, these guys, part A and part B, are more about the current account and that sort of thing, so we'll talk about it, but we went through this real quick in the video. So um, understanding, we're talking about international trade, and one of the things that they're starting with is that there's a zero current account balance, so it's basically a, a balanced um, current account, so exports and imports, and the other things uh, that I told you that you didn't really have to worry about, um, everything is all at zero. There's no surplus, there's no deficit. So those are just your, um, uh, your starting assumptions. But then the thing that's changing is uh, the inflation rate in the United States decreases relative to the inflation rate in South Korea. So that is the determinant that we're dealing with, okay? So remember, um, page 787 in the textbook is what talks about all of the individual uh, determinants. And that's a if you're gonna if you're gonna care about international you know foreign exchange markets then those determinants are really really important. All right, so let's do A. So uh, based on the decrease in the inflation rate, will United States exports to South Korea increase or decrease? All right, so um, South Korea will be buying um, your can now buy American goods with relatively more. Uh, with, with cheaper currency on their part. So since they're, in, they're, they're buying our stuff with their inflated money, and until the purchasing power parity theory really kicks in, um, there'll be this period of time where they can buy more of our stuff with their money. So um, exports will increase because of that. If you can buy more stuff with your money, then you will buy more of it. Okay, so uh, again, that's just pretty much straight one of the determinants. B, um, let's go with BI, B1, based on the United States exports in part A, answer each of the following. Will the United States current account balance remain in zero, B in surplus, or in deficit? So XN, and you don't have to say this, you just, you just have to give one word, right? Um, but I'm gonna explain it to you a little bit more. XN is a component of, um, of AB, and if we are exporting more, if exports go up, then XN becomes, it's hard to say more, uh, it goes up because it could be in, you know, it, granted it said that they started off in, in deficit, but um, I usually say it becomes more positive. All right. Um, and since we started at zero, that's what we have up here, then we know that we are going to be in surplus. So for XI, the, the, or uh, I'm sorry, B-I, the word that you want to say is surplus. That's your one word answer. Now for the second one, what will happen to real gross domestic product in the United States? This one has an explain, so you have to say a what and a why. Um, okay, so real GDP will rise. It'll rise because XN is a component of AD, well, I'm sorry, we'll skip that for now, is a component of real GDP. And when it goes up, so does real GDP. Okay, um, so there's your good explanation there. Now, this is the part that, you know, we are really sort of becoming a little bit more interested in because you're trying to learn about... Um, currency and, and, and how, to, how to graph it in relative strength and weakness. So South Korean currency is the one. Draw a correctly labeled graph of the Forex market for the United States dollar. So that's really important. They just told you which market um, to, to, to be drawing here. So I'm gonna do some things that you don't have to say and I'll do those in red. Show the effect of the lower inflation rate in the United States on the yuan per United States dollar, yuan price per United States dollar. All right, so remember, A, price of 1B quantity B. So that is our little phrase, okay? So since we're talking about the market for the United States dollar, that is quantity. So we've got, we're gonna go back, we've got dollars here. So the one price of one dollar quantity dollars. Um, so let's graph that out. 
All right, so I'll go turn this sideways. Um, the one price of one US dollar. And then down here, the quantity of dollars, demand for dollars, supply of dollars. And now what is going to happen? So ultimately, remember that, uh, we'll switch back again. Um, so exports are rising, which means more dollars are going to be needed. Um, so more dollars will have to be supplied. A greater quantity will be supplied, okay? Um, now in this example, we're talking about exports, right? So the purchases are being done by the South Koreans, right? So the South Koreans will demand a greater number. We'll go back to green here. Uh, the South Koreans will demand a greater number of dollars. Americans will supply a greater amount of dollars uh, because they're getting more for them, okay? So initially, there were two won uh, per dollar, but now Americans say can supply, uh, they will supply additional because they're going to get three, okay? Um, so that means that the won got weaker relative to the dollar. And weaker, uh, another way of saying that, is depreciated. It depreciated relative to the dollar, okay? Now why, so, you know, just a, a, a little bit more to, to learn about this, why are Americans interested in supplying this greater quantity of dollars? And the answer is, if you can sell your one dollar, okay, your one dollar, now for three instead of two, then things made in South Korea just became relatively cheaper, okay? So whether it's your Samsung phone or your Hyundai car or whatever else, now that just became relatively cheaper for Americans to buy because due to this inflation rate situation, um, the one weakened relative to the dollar, depreciated relative to the dollar, the dollar appreciated or strengthened relative to the one. So, and I'll, you know, eventually this is gonna sort of work itself out. Um, and that's why we like a flexible exchange rate system because these, um, these changes in the relative price of one currency makes importing or exporting, doing international business, a more good idea or a less good idea. And then our current accounts and, and things like that wind up being more uh, in line with where they ought to be, okay? So the super basics of currency exchange uh, through the lens of an FRQ. Thanks, everybody.